they're off and running. Walk on Air seemed to jump out a little at the start, didn't lose a lot of ground, and Arnside began quickly with Grand Falls, and just behind them, North Boy settling down. Arnside going through just in front of Walk on Air, and then Grand Falls. North Boy settles up fourth, a length and a half for the back, Raw Laughter, followed by Hot Beat, and back towards the centre, then Bust Up, who's now easing back to the tail. At the 800 metre mark, and they're not going hard, it's Arnside about a neck in front of Walk on Air, a length and a half, Grand Falls, and then North Boy sitting fourth, but out three deep, back in the middle, Hot Beat, a length for the back, Raw laughter. Three quarters last of all is bust up. They go to the 600 metre mark and it's a line of three as on the inside Grand Falls push through to join Arnside and walk on air and North Boy is now going up to them but out four deep in the pink colours. Right behind them hot beat bust up and raw laughter. On the turn they race. Grand Falls of the rails run in front of North Boy out in the centre then walk on air followed by Arnside and further back bust up. Let down North Boy and walk on air are going up to Grand Falls. He wants to run off the track North Boy he's hanging right out towards the centre but he's hit the front now from walk on air back in the middle running on bust up at north boy with a big weight near the outside fence but he'll get home north boy uh, ran out but he wanted a neck on the line i'd say to walk on air and bust up and then further back hot beat further back in the race then the inside would have been rolled after they got over the top of uh, grand falls and last of all after leading up is Arnside. and uh, number one north boy it'll pay 2.30 the win, 1.60 a place, 8 walk on air, showing 2.60, no third for number 6. Oh, Mark Sarah, he scored comfortably, actually, on the line. North Boy, number 1, written by Mark Zara. Number 1, North Boy, going up about 6 out to uh, Grand Falls and walk on air in the middle. He reached them. Then he wanted to do a right-hand turn. The jockey didn't fight him. He let him come to the outside. He came right out past the centre of the track, but he's won it about three-quarters. The margin on the line over walk on air and a neck third is bust up. Numbers are going up, and they are 1, 8 and 6, 1, 8, 6 and 5. North Boy always sitting well off the rail. Uh, four wide to five wide turning for home and then running out. I've never seen him do that before, but he scored, and he scored actually by just on three-quarters of a length. He was that wide out on the track. In 19.8, 19.78 to be factual, 19.78. So that's that's a good time rating. Uh, but it was interesting how wide he did track uh, down the side on the turn and particularly up the home straight. I just wonder if that's a tray that he's um, shown before on the track. We certainly haven't seen it on a, on a racetrack. But he's carried the 59, and I'd say that would uh, buoy the uh, connections with plenty of confidence. And just watching the head on here, he's finished all about 16, oh, a good 16 to 18 horses out uh, towards the middle. North Boy, too good with his 59, 190, 140, walk on air, two... All right, the full totes. One North Boy, 230, 8 walk on air, 260, no third for six, bust up. Quinella, 670, exact at 10, 20, trifecta, 129, 10, and the first four, 186 and 5, is 451, 90. McAvoy Dean, um... I haven't seen the horse do that before, lay out badly like that. No, I've just got uh, Tony on his way over now, and I'm interested to quiz him over that. Tony, uh, congratulations on your win with North Boy. Uh, good confidence boost for the horse? Yes, it was. Uh, I think he did a good job. He, uh, I haven't seen him wanting to lay out like he did in the straight and trying to give it up, but but uh, was still a strong winner on the line with the weight. It was a good effort. Yeah, he sort of looked a little bit awkward getting around the home turn, then proceeded to lay out more, and as you said, that's something he's never shown before? Yes, I mean, he's a horse. Uh, he's had, he's had uh, two runs here and were too fast failures, albeit in the Caulfield, the Guineas Prelude and the Caulfield Guineas, uh, probably at unsuitable distances. His best form is down the straight, of course, and he is a winner at Sandown. So, so maybe he just got on the wrong leg around the bend and just kept on that, that trend up the straight. Does he head back to uh, open age group and run in the uh, new market in a couple of weeks' time? I think we'll certainly consider it for sure. I mean, uh, he get, he'll get into the race with a very good weight and it's just nice to have him back in form and that'll do the horse the world a good. Uh, a couple of key runners later, McBeal looks hard to beat. She looks beautifully handicapped. Uh, she's been up a long time, but, but she appears to be right on top of her game, game at home, so um, she does look well placed. Presumed innocent in the Blue Diamond, one that runs on strongly? She does, she does. I was thrilled with the last start when she ran third. I thought that was her best run. Uh, the yell came out and made the form quite good, so, so we're not the worst chance in the race. And finally, elegant fashion, missed a place for the first time in her career last start, but still was, was a good run. Probably shouldn't have missed a place, Dean. Uh, meets these fillies at level weights, uh, but I think she showed in the vanity that she's up to class. Good start to the day. Good to see North Boy in the winner's store. Congratulations, Tony. Thank you, Dean. 
And it's coming up to 12. And Dave mentioned Sniff in the Tears. Well, it's at $37 to win and $6.30 for the place. Has still got to load, uh, still got to load away. As Pledge takes up its place, we still await uh, two horses to go in. And uh, Shahid's already in on the inside of Pledge. There's Sniff in the Tears about to go in. And we await the uh, favourite critic to take up its place in the outside barrier drawer. Has the barrier blanket on. And Damien Brown, uh, the uh, rider on board the favourite critic here. $2 to win, $1.30 for the place, uh, part owned by Murray Acklin. So it'd uh, be good to see uh, this horse uh, get home for Murray Acklin. All in, let's get the call on the listed stakes race, New Zealand Bloodstock Air Freight Stakes, Radio Pacific's Dave McDonald. Three-year-old fillies set to go. 1,600 metres is the trip. Critic, the favourites drawn over the outside. Betty Calhoun and Barrier One, green sleeves sometime. 1,600 for the fillies. Racing. Feel they jump out in a perfect line from the 1600. Betty Calhoun being punched out to the lead from that one barrier draw. Over on the outside, then going up a little wide about is Cascade Bay and getting through. Miss Capelli is heading for the front as well. A bit wider out, then sniffing the tears coming forward. In behind those, then is Coronet Critic is caught wide on the outside as they gallop into the back sometime. Travelling up on the inside of Critic, 1200 left to run. Betty Calhoun back on the inside now. Just beside it, green sleeves then pledge, full of running and hard held on the outside. And Shahid last about a neck away on the inner. Critic has made it to the front, 900 metres left to run, free wheels. Out by two lengths now, sniff in the tears, run second, Coronet's third on the outside. Following those around is Cascade Bay. Miss Capelli are near the fence on the inside, they pass the 800 metres, then some time in behind them, Betty Calhoun and Pledge and Green Sleeves and Shahid still last. They pack up a little 600 from home, Critic going beautifully in front. Two lengths clear, Coronet has got to second on the outside, sometimes closing on them the outer. Near the fence on the inside is sniffing the tears, the speed's on. Just behind them, Pledge getting closer. Cascade Bay on the inside, then came Betty Calhoun and Greensleeves and Miss Capellia and Shahid still last there in the straight and Critic is carousing. Sometime and sniffing the tears coming after it, Pledge a little wider out. But this is all over, Critic down to the winning post, a very, very stylish win. Second is going to be sniffing the tears just from Sometime, who's got third. In behind those to pledge the best of the, of the remainder. Following that home to uh, Miss Capellia, just ahead of it, Cascade Bay. Then came Betty Calhoun behind them to Coronet. In behind those, the last two are Greensleeves and Shahid. Critic number got to the front uh, around about 900 metres or a thousand from home and has just waltzed it. Yeah, one with a leg in the air. Critic, $2.30, 120. Photo miners confirm the result shortly. Now here's a call field update. And a grey song, $3. Leather Lane, $8.60. Exaggerate, $3.90. Foxborough, $12. Don Eduardo, $4.10. Telford, $10.00. And Residencia, $19. A field of only seven in the Swepps Cup, but an interesting race it is. Well, knowing uh, Joe McKinnon's penchant... ...on the wrong leg the whole way. So it was a good effort in winning. The new market is his goal now. Grey Song moved up, completed the line for the Swepps Cup. They're set to go. 1600 all clear racing now exaggerate winning the start slightly on the inside ahead of residence here and away quickly in the early stages leather lane and foxborough shows some dash today up fourth in behind them telford racing outside don eduardo and gray song is three deep and last of all residence here a narrow leader leather lane about a neck away in second placing one and a half then to foxborough racing outside exaggerate two lengths gray song who's racing on the outside of telford and two lengths to don eduardo 1100 left to go and only about six lengths would cover the field. Residencia led narrowly to Leather Lane the outside. Exaggerate a length and a half away in third place the inside. Foxborough's on its outside. Break of two and a half lengths to Grey Song followed by Telford and last of all pushed along a touch Don Eduardo to the railway side. Leather Lane took over the running now at the 800 and Foxborough strode to second. Residencia a length and a half away third the inside and then Exaggerate Grey Song, Telford and Don Eduardo attacked onto them. Up the side nearing the 600 Leather Lane led Foxborough 
exaggerate. Grey Song's been wide. Residentia back 50 inside now in a bunching field, and Don Eduardo had joined Telford as they came up towards the turn. Leather Lane from Foxborough. Grey Song running off the track on one rein. He's hanging badly. Exaggerate's running on, and so is Don Eduardo as they come around the home turn. Leather Lane narrowly from Exaggerate. Don Eduardo. Telford trying to push into the clear, but he's pocketed away with the Don Eduardo keeping him there. Leather Lane on the inside, narrowly inside the 200. Exaggerate and Don Eduardo after him. 100 to go now. Don Eduardo perhaps staying the better. Crabs the lead, draws clear, and from last, it's Don Eduardo beating Leather Lane by a length and a nose to Exaggerate. Then came uh, Telford, who didn't have much luck in the straight, followed by Residencia, dropping out second last, Foxborough, and Graysong, who hung badly at the turn last in. The Don has taken out the Sweeps Cup in a fine staying performance, 370 and 210 on Super Tab, a photo for the second position. But Don Eduardo, starting to fulfil his earlier potential, makes it three in a row now. Damien Oliver and Lee Friedman, and he's stepped out of the Bendigo Class 1 to win in listed company in town. Second placing to number two, Leather Lane. Darren Gauchy, third, number three, Exaggerate, written by Brett Pribble, numbers of five, two, and three. The official fourth was number six, Telford. And fifth in was number seven, Residencia. And the time, 137.14. 137.14. They did slow the pace in the middle stages of the race, so it's really underlined the strength of the finishing performance of Don Eduardo to uh, get home from last. Yes, he's got a lot of potential. He's got a long way to go to repay the purchase price, of course, uh, of well over three million New Zealand. Uh, I think it was uh, three. Just uh, trying to remember. I know it was a, we we hear a dozen different uh, price tags uh, reported uh, for this horse, but um, it was 3.6 New Zealand, I believe. Makes it around 2.8 Aussie. Long, long way to go to repay, but uh, the bloke who put his hand in his pocket's got uh, plenty. And you just get the feeling now that he's being aimed specifically at the derby. It could be a big day for uh, Mr. Kowenko on that uh, day late in March. He's a very promising stay, this guy. 3.70 and 2.10 officially for Don Eduardo. $3.30 Leather Lane. No third exaggerate. Quinella $16. Exacta $24.60. The trifecta paid $58.20. Yes, the fame. sixty and the trifecta 282 Warwick Farm, 10 minutes off the air. Cut favourite here at 210 Mission Statement, $3 and Minority at 560 Well, uh, race callers on days like this uh, find that the adrenaline flows a little more than on an ordinary day because uh, good horses excite racing commentators and I'm sure that's the way Ian Craig's feeling today as we go across to him for his call of the first at Warwick Farm. Thank you John as uh, John Tapp joins us now for the broadcast of the first. Yes it's always a, a day where the adrenaline uh, does rush a little uh, more than normally with the good horses and uh, the Chipping Norton and the appearance of Ty the Knot to see if he can make it that record-breaking four successive wins, Universal Prince, etc. But more about that later. All the rage in the first is Lou Penter, number six. He's 210 and 150. Mission statement, short on the tote, $3.160. Good type of filly, Lou Penter. Races in cream and green stripes. He's on the toe. They're set. 1,300 metres. Off in the first of the afternoon at the farm, and Lou Penter jumped as well as anything. Conspirator going up rather quickly to join the stable mate. A length away in third position, Barabella, followed by Mission Statement, Minority, and Wild Hut. They travel down by the 1100 marker, and there's little or no speed on here. And Lou Penter shows the way. About a half length on Conspirator, who's racing very greenly, throwing the head around. Third is Mission Statement, followed by Minority, Wild Hut, and Barabella drops out last. They head down to the 800 marker and Conspirator on the outside takes the lead from the stable mate Lou Penter by only about a half length or so with Mission Statement third and Munts having a couple of peeps over the right sh uh, shoulder and then Barabella followed by Wild Heart and Minorities last. Travelling down past the 500 marker and again Lou Penter striding up on the inside to shade Conspirator. Mission Statement pushed along a couple of lengths away third from Barabella Wild Heart and Absolute as Minority. Into the straight they travel and the Danehill filly is the 
leader Lou Penter about a half length on her stablemate Conspirator who's running a mighty race and then Wild Heart getting home well Mission Statement under the whip is still not done with and then Barabella well Lou Penter's gone here's Mission Statement after Conspirator and Mission Statement hits the lead Wild Heart late but Mission Statement wins it Mission Statement from Wild Heart Conspirator and Barabella then Minority and Lou Penter has knocked up and has finished Stone Motherless last well, the boom's off her. Number one mission statement written by Chris Muntz wins the first of the day on Tab Limited has paid $3.20 and $1.70. Second down to third placings. Wild Hut. And um, on a race where there's a win and two place dividends, number four looks to have just snatched second at $4.90. <laughs> Well, Lou Penter, you've heard, you've seen the race, many of you uh, have seen it, and uh, she uh, seemed to settle all right in the lead, but the moment Brian York went for her, there was nothing there. And, of course, at uh, Canterbury at her debut, she was wide. Uh, she, on the turn, looked as though she'd run last, but in the last 100 metres, got home well. Maybe she's a filly that needs speed on and can be ridden off the pace, and uh, that wasn't the case today. But you can take nothing from the winner, a very nice... Nice horse by Mars K from Re White. Two on the trot now from as many runs this time in, which followed the inaugural third at Randwick on the inside track at its debut in the Canterbury Stakes. One, four, two, and five are the officials. Mission statement, C months first for Jack Denham and the owners, the Hobartful Stud Syndicate, Graham Mapp and his family. Second, Wild Heart by Unbridled Song, Graham Rogers and Daryl McClellan. And two, Conspirator, written by Jimmy Cassidy. Third, by Mars K from Angel's Wings, has done a, a jolly side better than the more fancied stablemate. Gay Waterhouse, the trainer. Number five, fourth. Now, here's the time, 1.18.21. Yes, they certainly dawdled. A class record, 116.60, waiting on the sectional in the margins. And here are the official dividends. Number one, 320 and 170. Number four, 490. There was no third for number two. The Quinella, $20.30. Exact at $22.50. The Trifecta, $155.50. And the first four, 142 and five, $567.10. Well, happy Alan Denham coming up on screen here on track as Mission Statement returns. Uh, he's got a bright future, Mission Statement, and when the races get a little bit longer, he's going to be further advantaged, and uh, the Denham stable is really on a roll now and uh, could be wise to follow them. Right, the margin's coming up, yeah. Yes, Ian... They're racing, and they've come out in a good line with uh, Irish Glen, one of the first out here from Family Favourite. Lazophany went back at the start, and just behind them, quietly adamant, followed by Zabuin. Further out, Rice Farmer and the Red Dimple. Behind those, McBeal, followed by Big Pat, and last of all is Nautilism. Up the back they go, and the leader is Irish Glen, about a half Family Favourite, and the Red Dimple. Lazophany is out four deep around Rice Farmer from McBeal, back one off the fence, quietly adamant, the rail two to Big Pat, and Zabuin and Nautilism on the outside a bit. Up the back at the 1,400 metre mark, Lazophany has caught wide and Oliver will have to push forward, I'd say, where it's Irish Glen about a half length in front. Lazophany working up on the outside, quickly goes up outside the lead now, sits back up a half length, a length and a half the Red Dimple, family favourite the fence, two lengths further back, Rice Farmer. They're followed the inside of it by Quietly Adam at a length and a half, McBeal. She's got three behind a big pat, followed by Zabuin and last of all, Nautilism. Over the top of the hill, Lazophany testing Irish Glen. They got about three lengths in front of the Red Dimple and family favourite, two and a half, Rice Farmer, one further back than Quietly Adam at. McBeal outside it, a length into Big Pat from Nautilism and Zabuin. Coming down the side, they race to the 900 metre mark. Lazophany off the fence, about a neck in front of Irish Glen. They're two and a half in front now from the Red Dimple. On the inside, family favourite. They're followed fifth the outside now by Rice Farmer. A length and a half, quietly adamant. McBeal about five lengths off the lead. For the back, Zabuin, Big Pat and Nautilism. 600 to go. Lazophany led a half length to Irish Glen. Now got a length in front of Irish Glen and Rice Farmer. And Oliver tried to get a break on Lazophany. Got away a length 
and a half in front of Rice Farmer, then McBeal. Irish Glen struggling and further back the Red Dimple. The others are under the whip. Was off and he straightened up three quarters. Rice Farmer and McBeal are starting to join in with the lightweight coming down the outside. Lazophany at the 300. Three quarters in front of McBeal starting to gather it up on the outside. McBeal goes up to Lazophany. The mares have got up between them with McBeal out wide in front. Wanting to get off the track but it's clear now from Lazophany and Rice Farmer running on his nautilism but McBeal too good. Wins two and a half to three on the run home. Second Lazophany. Rice Farmer grabbed third I'd say from nautilism fourth. A gap quietly at him at Cebu and then Irish Glen. Further back in the race Big Pat. The Red Dimple and family favourite last over the line. And the winner, number four, McBeal M. Zara, 260, the winner, dollar twenty for the place. Two last off and he won seventy. Photo third, prominent nine rice farmer, two forty. Suited when the pace started to step up coming down the side, but he got away uh, on Lazophany inside the six hundred, tried to pinch it. McBeal was getting a good carry into the race, uh, travelled sweetly around the turn. She only had to get past one, that was Lazophany. And she came in with only that lightweight today of some uh, fifty one and a half, which is a huge weight drop for her of late. Uh, and she's been too good for Lazophany, which is number two. And third in is number nine, and that is Rice Farmer. So it's four, two and nine, four, two, nine. To the third race on the card, look the best weighted horse for the day. Lazophany expected to be up on the pace. The race would have panned out the way most thought it would, but to McBeal just with that weight pull was too good. She has been up for a while, as um, the mention was made this morning, and again by Tony uh, McAvoy uh, later today. But she's racing well. She's raced by Chris and Noel Payne and Lindsay Park Racing Syndicate, managed by Mark Pilkington. She's by Jeanne. And the totes, 429, McBeal, 260 a win, 120 a place, 2 Lazophany, 179, Rice Farmer, 3rd, 240. Quinello 550, exact to 1050, 429, trifecta, $40.10, and the first four is to come. Have dividends. The exact of. Vet certificate required before she's allowed to race again. Okay, so we've all got that now. And we're waiting for Michael Carl to come into line on Hydra Master. Michael, of course, shortly to ride overseas in uh, Hong Kong. Up he comes now on the Victorian Hydra Master. And they're ready to run. Racing in the second here at Warwick Farm, and the best out was Plea from the inside. The outside, Hydra Master jumped sweetly. Sinbad is galloping third. The Builder is fourth, followed by Sugarland, who's the only mare in the race, King of Rhythm being second last, and Absolute is refute. Down the home straight they travel on the first occasion, and Sinbad shows the way narrowly from the Victorian Hydra Master. Plea settles third on the inside of the Builder, followed by Sugarland. King of Rhythm is second last, and two and a half lengths refute. Well, now, how long are they going to race in this order? It'll be interesting as they go past the judge, and the leader is the Johnny McNair train, Sinbad, a length on Hydra Master. Plea third, and the builder on its outside fourth, followed closely by Sugarland, keeping company with King of Rhythm, and two lengths refute. No change. Out of the straight they go. Past a pretty packed uh, car enclosure too. And at the 15.50 and the leader is Sinbad. And the rider Rod Quinn well up on the irons. Allowed to dictate terms to suit himself on the Sinbad. It's two lengths clear on Hydra Master. Racing with the mouth wide open. Plea is third by the 14. And then comes the builder followed by King of Rhythm. Next to last is Sugarland. And still about two lengths off to refute. They work their way to the 1200 marker in this order. And Sinbad by a length and three quarters on Hydra Master racing without cover. Plea over on the inside is being given every chance by J.A. Cassidy. Likewise, C. Brown on the builder. King of Rhythm is over on the fence and is immediately behind Plea. Outside of King of Rhythm being Sugarland and still two lengths away. Last of all is Refute. Well, they're going to the 9.50 and this has been the pattern from just after the start. And Sinbad shows the way but here's a move coming from C. Brown on the builder. And the NG McBurney trained horse raced up on the outside the builder to join Sinbad at the 800 marker and King of Rhythm is going forward now followed by Hydra Master in the centre. Please become well and truly snookered. Sugarland next to last and refute last only seven lengths off the lead. Occupied narrowly at the 600 by Sinbad from the builder. Close handy and three deep is King of Rhythm. A length and a half to Hydra Master. Please still well and truly bailed away. There's a fall. The builder lost the rider. My goodness me. That was a sensation. Refute was inconvenienced. Sugarland hit the front as they straightened 
from King of Rhythm. And as they race down past the 200 marker and Sugarland, the only mare in the race, race clear of King of Rhythm, followed by Refute and Hydra Master. And uh, Sinbad's dropped right out of it, but Sugarland will trot it in with the nose roll. Down to the line goes Terry Jones aboard. Sugarland to win it easily. Sugarland beat Refute, Hydra Master and King of Rhythm. And there goes the riderless horse, the builder from Plea Sinbad has run last. And Corey Brown bit the dust, just coming to the corner. The ambulance paramedics are right on the spot. And uh, he's on the track at the moment and we'll bring you that medical report as soon as we can. Well, might be able to have a look at a replay of that uh, in just a moment. Number four, Sugarlands won the event. $6.70 and three thirty. trained by Sean Ritchie, by the jogger from Vaucluse, a bay mare, a four-year-old. Terry Jones in the saddle. So, number four, Sugarland has won the race. And uh, 21 starts, four wins. And has had the three seconds and three thirds. I'm waiting on the numbers. Let's just check uh, Corey. He's still on the track there. Uh, the uh, the horse seemed to stumble, and I'd be interested to have a look at a replay, but we haven't got one applicable here on track at the moment. Four, six, three, and two are the official placings. Number four, the winner, and that is Sugarland Terry Jones on the tote in New South Wales, has paid six seventy and three thirty. Second goes to number six, Refute, written by Danny Beasley, has paid ten dollars forty. There is no third tote for number three, Hydra Master, written by Michael Carl. Right, Ian, thanks for... ...critic in the New Zealand Bloodstock Air Freight Stakes earlier today. Could be both listed races to the Dawn and Peter Williams uh, trained uh, runners should Ali McBeal get up. Lava Lady won three starts ago in the North Island at uh, Hastings. Uh, of course, McMammoth, I think, is running into form nicely. Good run last time out for eighth, and uh, fourth last time was a good run too. Here's the call on the cup with Radio Pacific's Dave McDonald. Just waiting on the last to go forward now. Just went in and then backed away Lava Lady. Favourite, 285 now, shortening all the time, and 145, Millie Bijou. I chance, lined and set on the inside. We still await Lava Lady. Just a little reluctant to take up her place. Second favourite here, I chance, 360 and 160. Third favourite's at sevens, and that is McMammoth, 760 and 220. Michael Walker to ride. The rest of the field are in double figures, win-wise. The least of those being 11s for King Dior. And just a bit of a hold up getting Lava Lady in. Steps forward now. Protective blanket on and it goes. So they're all in now. Attendant about to scramble out the front gate. Start is already on a stand. It's waiting on the rider. Terry Mosley to become settled on. Lava Lady. Contending up with it. Just getting clear. We're set now. Feel ready. Racing. Field in the Telecom Gold Cup. They're underway. I chance pounced out pretty well from one. Goes straight to the leader. Over the outside, Harp Lug is going up to make a race of it early, settling in behind them. Amazing charm. Lava Lady in the centre and wide about on the track. Then to Ali McBeal. Just in, uh, just on the inside of it, then to Anquilla. There's two lengths away then with a lap of the track to run to Millie Bijou. Three lengths away is Rose O'Collins, McMammoth second to last, and King Deals at the rear. They gallop out to the 1600 metre mark. Speed is right on here. 1600 from home. After a brief tussle, I chance regained the lead. Ali McBeal's over the outside, a length and a quarter back. Amazing charm near the rail, running third. Then Harp Lager over on the outside is being followed by Lava Lady. Two lengths back, Millie Bijou on the inside, just shading it as Enquilla the other. A length and a quarter back, then Rose O'Collins being followed by King Dior. And over on the outside, McMammoth. They gallop into the back with 1,200 left to run I chance. In front, a length and a half on Ali McBeal. Two lengths back, running third, amazing charm. Then Harp Lager, fourth back on the end.